You got YouTube up, right? Yep. All right. It's streaming? Mm-hmm. What's going on, good people? Welcome back to another episode of the Bison Trading Show, coming at you live from the Bison Trading Labs. Welcome back to another live market analysis episode where we break down everything in the market that you need to keep your eyes on. You know tomorrow is our big day, our Friday live trading session, so make sure you tune in with your two favorite people, Ty Trades Futures, and of course... You know who it is, man. It's your boy, I'm the D-Guy, a.k.a. Pro Financial. Appreciate every one of y'all for pushing up every Tuesday and Thursday, showing your love, having your notebook, being prepared. But man, tonight's going to be very important for tomorrow. So you must have that notebook out, have that pen ready. Let's get these levels cracking so for tomorrow we can make some good trades. So tonight we'll just go over uh, a few good pairs. You know, it's been a lot of things going on in the market that we want to make sure that you guys are up to date on. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. And of course, if you guys have any questions or concerns, make sure you email us at Bison Trading. 2018 at gmail.com we'll get back to you and if you want immediate response drop it in the chat right now and we'll get back to you as soon as possible so with that being said also i want to just make sure y'all know the time for tomorrow it is 9 10 a.m eastern standard time no news coming out tomorrow so it should be a normal friday so with that being said hold on for one second you guys All right. So since it is Thursday, we want to make sure that we're prepared going into tomorrow's session. So let's see what levels we need to look on when it comes to US 30, a.k.a. the Dow Jones. Now, from what we've seen on the Dow Jones, we've seen nothing but an uptrend that's been continuing to make higher highs and higher lows. If you've been on the stream before, you know that when we go back and look at the historical context of the Dow Jones, this thing has been going up since the 1800s. So we don't want to fight that trend. And we can see that the trend right now is still intact. As a matter of fact, today's candle, I know this red candle pops up right here. It's the last one. But remember, today has technically already ended. So this is today's candle for real. So as you guys can see, we had a very nice update and we're continuing to move higher. So let's go ahead and break it down to the hourly chart. Now, what I want to talk about tonight is very important. It's market structure. I know we talked about it a lot. We haven't talked about it recently, but we're back at it because tonight we see a perfect trend and perfect trends usually follow market structure, meaning that if you do see an uptrend, you should expect to see higher highs and higher lows, which is what we've been seeing ever since or really as far back as you want to go. But most recently, we'll break it down to April 13th at these bottoms at 33,000. 570. Now, if we follow these prices over to the left, look at what we've run into. We run into an area that used to be previous resistance, and that is market structure right there, especially for uptrends. Whenever you have an area that used to be resistance, expect that level to now act as a support level when prices come back into it at a later date and a later time, which is what we saw exactly happen right here, and is what we'll see, what we'll see the market continue to do over and over again as we can see right here we follow this bottom at 750 over to the left it lines up with a previous wick that used to be a high so if we zoom in exactly to where we are right now the last high that we've made was located right here at 90 excuse me 33,925 so that should be the level that we expect prices to come back to that right there is the last level of resistance the last high so that now should become support as prices come back into that level so if we compare that to where we're at right now, that shouldn't be too far away. It's about 100 points away. For the Dow Jones, that's nothing. That could happen at any time, any place. So that's one level we want to look out for, 33,925. Also keep in mind, if we follow these prices over, look at what they line up with. They line up with the last impulsive move that the buyers made to the upside. So whenever buyers are consolidating, which they were right here for a few candles, Whenever they start the next up move, always mark off that price level that the up move started from because usually buyers 
and sellers like to push prices back down into those levels. Like Darren has told you guys multiple times before, it's like a it's like a test. They come back and say, "Are you sure?" If the buyers are certain, then the buyers step back in, they push prices up. So keep this level in mind: nine hundred twenty-five to nine hundred. So thirty-three thousand nine twenty-five, thirty-three thousand nine hundred. You should be good. Now, right now, if you want to make a move, like right here, right now. I couldn't be mad at you if you went long based off of these levels of support right here, because technically speaking, this right here is the most uh, recent support level. So if you go long from there, I can't be mad at you. But I think we could get even better prices from down here at 925. But I, I like the uptrend and I don't think that it's out of the question to see prices just find support right here and continue moving up. So these will be our two levels, 34,000 even and then 33,925. So 34,000 gets broken, aim for this level right here. But if not, and this support level holds up, yeah, you can go long. I'm okay with that. In terms of the selling side, I don't know. My eyes don't see it, but that's why we have two pairs of eyes here. I want to see if Darren sees anything different for this chart, so let's pass it over to him. All right, so let's unhide my moving averages and hide the volume. Go to the monthly. Because like I was speaking with the uh, with the stream last Tuesday, which was that I didn't, I definitely wanted to clear up the not including the monthly and how important the monthly is. Because without including a monthly, you can never get the full justification or the full picture of what's truly going on. Like you could catch yourself getting caught up in smaller time frames and pretty much trying to fight and find a trade on a direction you're not even sure it's even going. So that's why I always stress and stress and stress. We have to look on the higher time frames 10 times over, even if, if, it's, if it looks the same and nothing has changed, we definitely wanna go back and dot our I's and cross our T's. So with that being said, let's just look at this on just clear eye it naked. So as you can see, just higher highs, even the next candle has even um, begin to to open on the close of the previous or no this candle has opened on the open of this candle right of the last candle right is that the open the top is the open for a green candle or is it the close oh man you froze oh man you froze yo you froze yo you froze bro Yo, bro, you froze. Oh, man. Sorry about that, guys. Just bear with us for another second. Tiberius will be back with us just in a few. Um, all my YouTube viewers, please just stand by. Tiberius should be back. His YouTube had, I mean, his Wi-Fi possibly dropped. And we are now having technical difficulties. So let's kind of wait and see if Tiberius is going to come back to us. Come on, Ty. I know your Wi-Fi got it in it, man. Let's push. Yo, Ty. Yo, Ty. All right, guys. So sorry about that, but... um. Since we're having technical difficulty, I'm going to go ahead and pick up pick up the stream. Um, let's just kind of chill and wait back for Tiberius to join back in. But let's just kind of see what happens. Sorry about that, guys. Let me just give him a quick little call. Maybe he'll pick right back up. So there, my boy Tiberius, right there. Hopefully, we can get him back in here. We back, we back, we back, we back, we back. We don't see you though. How about now? All right, we see you now. All right, guys. Sorry about that, YouTubers. We are back. We had a, just a temporary technical difficulty, but that's nothing that you know the duo or the team can't handle. So, like I was saying, uh, the candle that just formed right now is the top of that. I'm mean, sorry, the candle that's that is before the candle that formed down. Is that at the top of the candle the close or the open? That right there is the close. All right, so being that the next candle opened on the previous month's close, 
I would definitely be convinced that we are now going to be, cre we're just now creating higher highs. And But like I told you, with any higher highs, we should definitely be respect, we should be expecting some type of pullback or somewhat of a confirmation of if the market's going to continue up. So just off that, we're just going to just take that piece. Yes, the next monthly candle has formed in the close of last month which lets us know that the 20 is above the 50 and the bulls are still in control, at least for this time frame. So let's drop down to the weekly. So the weekly, kind of like the same story, you know, you know, a huge push up. Um, we got three candles, form, one, two, three, four candles formed after that red candle, which would, which is kind of like a retracement candle. It didn't have enough, that one candle didn't have enough momentum to retrace back down to the last high of that red candle. But as you can see, the green candle that formed right next to it, wick, looked like it hit dead on on top where that red candle wick is. Yep, so it hit it right on the nose. So that can let us know that the bulls are still in control, had a nice little retest to push up. So this, the 20 is now still above the 50 on this one as well. So let's drop down to the daily. So this daily would definitely put the icing on the cake or the nail in the coffin to let us know that, you know, buying and bulls are or the decision or the side we want to be on when taking this trade. Um, I just feel like even though it's we're, the day candle that we're in right now is red, I feel like it's just going to be kind of like the little the red candles that has been forming previously. So I feel like if we can get a nice little retest off of those highs right next to the green candle next to the red one, but those highs over to the left around 33, excuse me, 34030. Oh man. Another technical difficulty, guys. I look crazy. Can you hear me still? Yo. It was breaking up a little bit. Okay, so we, we're Hello? still good. Yep, you hear me now? Yep. All right, so I want to see a retest come down right on the highs of the area around 33,600. Those highs where those candles are right there. So if we can get prices to kind of respect those. Nope, up a little higher. Up, oh, yep, those candles right there. If we can get price to come back there and stay above that area, um, I feel like the uh, I would be comfortable being in a buy. And I wouldn't even see it. I could even see it come down to the where Tiberius had it the first time. Um, down at that area, but I feel like since that red candle came down and touched it perfectly, I feel like that was the confirmation, and it was like, yes, we want to go that way. So now the next area that needs confirmation was the area we just broken out of, which was the candle that just the red, the green one that just formed. The red candle, we we're trying to get that to come down to test those highs or that that top area to be like, are you sure you want to go up? And I uh, hopefully it's going to come down, respect that area, and continue up. So. With that being said, I'm definitely all in for the buys, and I'm definitely going to try to drop down. Excuse me. Definitely going to be looking for the side of buyers, and I'm going to be looking for low enough prices, me as a buyer, to want to hop back in to take the market up. So let's drop down to lower time frame, and let's dig in. Go down to the two-hour. So the two-hour, it kind of, to me, has a better picture because it can really see how where the high is formed at, and and it's really showing that higher high area. And I even feel like, sh um, even though Tiberius said he doesn't really see a short, I just feel like a short could possibly happen right now, kind of where we are right now, because the short that's happening right now is the reflection of the higher high that was just formed, that green candle. So now, being that that high was formed, now we're looking for our time for the retest or a pullback. So if it stay, if it breaks past the the low, right next to where we are right now, those bottom areas right there, if it can break that, I will be convinced that it could have enough momentum to come all the way back down and touch the highs at thirty three nine hundred, the area you pointed out before, and as you can see, that area lines up perfectly with this um twenty moving average, and I told you how I feel about moving averages that the market usually plays them close, and they usually uh, the market likes to come down and play and dance and tap on top of it before it goes up. Because as you can see, the two other previous times, it almost looks like we were in this position once before. Before this happened, it looks like we were we were in this pre predicament maybe two other times. The first one 
which was kind of uh, that the, the previous high behind this one around the 33 no go to that top up there yep right there so i kind of feel that's where we are kind of sitting right now and that red candle formed exactly next to it the way this one did here so i feel like even though this candle is kind of forming green that's not going to fool me because that candle formed at the bottom of that candle so i would feel like it's now going to be pushing back down and try to tap the 20 moving average so I would want to put like a zone somewhere right around those highs. So unhide your moving averages. I mean, your signals. So uh, I would put like a little zone or a little t uh, box at that high, kind of where at the 33,900. So that would be a good promising area for me. And kind of stretch that over. Yep. And now that you have that, now drop down to the one hour. All right, all right. And now drop down to the five minute because I want to see how low is low and how high is high. All right, so for buyers, I think ultimately that's the route we're going to go for the longer term. Sellers, I feel like this could be your chance right now to kind of get your pips or get whatever you want to get off. It can happen right now just because the market is now, well, just on the five minute, it is now broken down below the uh, both moving averages. The moving average is now crossed on this one, and it's now looking like it's respecting the seven moving average, uh, excuse me, the 20 moving average and coming back down. So I feel like sellers, if you're going to hop in, this is kind of like the perfect opp opportunity to hop in just to take it back down to the zone, back to the 33,900, and that would be the area where us buyers will hop back in to take it back up again. And if I was a buyer, I wouldn't really take it right now because... We want to stay as close to the saying as buy low, sell high as possible. So if we're selling, I mean, excuse me, if we're buying, where we're at right now doesn't look like a low area. Kind of if you look like, kind of like if where the highs is, and yeah, we are kind of at like at lows, but we're not at lower prices. Yeah, we're at the bottom, we're the bottom of the structure, but we're not at lower prices. So I feel like lower prices will be at that 33900 So to sum up what I'm saying is buyers we need to be patient and wait for prices to drop back a little bit lower before we hop in sellers i feel like if you're going to make your move you can be able to make it now and see how much pips it is from where we are right now just to the uh zone and i would definitely hop in for a short right now so whatever that is just to the top of the zone matter of fact do it just to the top of that green wick over to the left of it so follow yep that yep right there so just 66. So I would just take it like that far. I don't know if I would take it all the way to the bottom of that. But I would definitely feel comfortable taking a sell currently right now if I had to take a sell. But ultimately, I'll be waiting for the setup for the buys. So that's my analysis. All right. There you go, good people. That will wrap up our analysis for Dow Jones. Despite the Wi-Fi, we still get it going. Yeah, man. Can't no, stop us. No devils stopping any show over here, man. I think that's what happens when we drop too much game. Yeah, they, bro. Like, the, the, the joint be like, yo, nah, they, they telling real <laughs> secrets over there. Like. All right. So that brings us to our next pair, which is Dollar Swiss. Good old Dollar Swiss. Now, if you guys remember for last week, we were looking for the potential head and shoulders on this pair, which I would say last week, I would say maybe 75% chance that it happened. This week, I'm leaning more towards like maybe a 30% chance that it happens because we either had two scenarios that could have happened. We could have had prices come back to these support levels, buyers hold up these levels and push it higher. That's still not out of the question because we still haven't gotten too far past these lows quite yet. But if we're looking at the price action, we have to respect what's in front of us and notice that on a daily chart, we don't see it. But we are making lower lows and lower highs on the four hour and the hour. So with that being said, we have to consider that and take that into consideration. So let's go ahead and drop down to the lower time frames and see what we have. Now, on the lower time frames, we can see that we're continuously making lower lows and lower highs. If we start at this top that we made, Back on April 1st, we've been making continuous lower lows and lower highs. 
Now, remember how I told you about market structure and an uptrend for the Dow Jones? Well, it's the same concept. Just flip everything around when it comes to short trades and trying to get into selling moves. All you have to do is instead of looking for the last high to act as support, now you look for the last low to act as resistance. So you want to see prices come back up to test those last lows. And as we follow this chart, we can see that happen multiple times. Whenever the lower high, whenever the last low gets hit, prices reverse and turn around. And that's what we've been seeing so far. So, I mean, based on the chart, we, we got to trade what we see. We're making lower lows and lower highs. I haven't gone over the weekly, but I should because that'll tell you guys that since April of 2019, so for two years straight, Dollar Swiss has been in a downtrend making lower lows and lower highs. Now, it does have its up moves here and there. Notice it had a nice up move from March 9th all the way up to March 16th, about a whole week. And then a nice up move from August 31st, September 21st, so about a month. And then we had our most recent up move from the beginning of the year. Now, this one was a little bit more extended than the other ones. It lasted for about three months. But eventually, sellers stepped back in, which is seen clearly by this big old candle right here to the downside. Not only is this a bearish engulfing, it's also a V pattern reversal. That lines up with major levels of support over to the left at 94 even. And this is occur this occurs on a weekly chart. So that means that whatever happens, whatever chart patterns form, have way more significance. So it looks like overall the sellers are trying to step back in and take this downtrend over from the buyers. So I would say right now the buying move is a little bit a little bit dead right now. The only thing that could bring it back to life is if prices are able to find support down here. Now, like I said before, we're not all the way past these levels. We're still in the general area. So buyers still have a chance to move it higher. But based on what the sellers have been doing and what the overall trend is, I got to stick to the short side on this one. So I'll pass it over to Darren. Let's get your thoughts on this one, my boy. All right. Let me hide your uh, signals right quick. So what I really like is the way you have that head and shoulders pattern kind of set up. But I already kind of knew um, that the sellers were going to be kind of in control just because I feel like uh, the way you have that downtrend line, that downtrend line was formed on a much higher time frame. And any time a box or a downtrend line or uptrend line or a box is broken um, that was formed in a higher time frame, is kind of like a confirmation of like, oh, yeah, that, that could definitely be going down. So I feel like being that the market broke back down into that downtrend line, I'm not sure if it was like a channel or anything, but being that it broke back down into the box, I definitely felt like <clears throat> it's definitely going to try to head back down to the bottom of the channel or whatever was formed. So let's move to the higher time frame and kind of see where that, Excuse me, downtrend line was formed. So go to the monthly first. Um, so probably looks like it was formed maybe on the weekly or the daily, but you can kind of see the downtrend line and it looks like the market kind of did like a little fake out move, um, which was kind of like the breakout of the channel, but respect the 20 moving average with the big exhaustion or a big push back down. Um, down back below the line, the downtrend line. So actually, I want you to actually clone that line you have there. It makes like a channel. Did you clone it? There you go. And kind of put that line underneath it and kind of form like a channel, like a downward channel. Because I want to see how far away Actually, I liked it better when you sat it on top of those highs. Yeah, so actually, I want you to put yeah put a line right there so it's sit, that one's crossing over those highs because I could feel that that bottom that line right there could either could definitely be the bottom of one so called to say channel, and then there could possibly be another one formed right down below. But I just feel like the one down below are just um, candles or areas that push out of the channel. So this is the actual channel, but these are the candles that pushed out or, you know, that pushed all the way out. So I like it better right here. So with that being formed on the on the monthly, I feel like now we can definitely get prices to come back down to try to test those highs. 
um, where it lines right up to this low over here. So where this low is formed at over here by 2018, right above that. Yep. So if that if the market could come down to that line and respect it, I would definitely agree. The market is going to definitely content do that head and shoulders pattern, which we said, which was on another time frame, and continue up. But if the market breaks this area right here, that good area of duality, I feel like it could definitely go back down to the bottom of structure of 88 cents. So, but that's just all my take on the monthly. So let's drop down to the weekly. So the 7 is below the 50, I mean, excuse me, the 20 is below the 50 on the weekly. The 20 is below the 50 on the, I mean, excuse me, the 20 is below the 50 on the monthly. The 20 is below the 50 on the day of the week. Monthly and weekly, what the hell? Um, so now it's uh, on, on the weekly right now. So same kind of picture. I feel like uh, it looks like it's kind of trying to dance on this 50 moving average. So where we are, are right now is a very, very important area where we at right now because where we at right now can either turn the market to go back up to form that head and shoulders. Tiberius has formed nicely. Or if it breaks through it, I can see it coming back down to the 20, excuse me, yeah, the 20 moving average or to the bottom of structure, or where that green line is at 90 cents. So, um, just with that being said, monthly, 20s below 50, weekly, 20s below 50, let's drop down to the daily, and let's see if this is the icing on the cake to let us know, yes, the market is definitely going to go down. So, no, this to me lets me know that all higher time frames are not aligned, which to me can mean one thing, either one, we're still in the retracement, uh, period or two, the market is trying to form and go the other way, or kind of do like a psych out and go in in its original way. So fake out or go in in its original way. So um, I feel like I want to see what the market's going to do right now, or what it does when it comes back up to the twenty moving average, or even um, to that purple zone. But for some reason, um, that being that this market broke down into that channel. I feel like it's not going to have enough momentum to hit or retest that purple zone. I feel like it possibly going to only have enough momentum just to hit that 20 moving average. And maybe a wick will come push up and hit it and tap it. But it's going to come back down and close down below that area. But right now for me, I would definitely stay to the side on this one. And be a little bit patient and let the trade come for me. So the two areas that I definitely want to kind of wait for is um, kind of where we are right now. So what area is that? Around the 92, 250 area. I want to see what it, so let me write that, 92, 250, 50 area. And I want to see the area when it, it comes back up to the 93, 500. Um, and go to an area where it lines up with the 20 moving average. So find a quarter level right around that 20 moving average. 93, 90. 250. Yep. So yeah, those would be my kind of like my three levels to kind of see what the market does, which is the 92, 250, 93, 500, and the 93, 250. So I think based on those, on that, and even just even the next candle that's going to form after where we are right now, because I feel like the next candle that we're where we are right now would definitely tell us the next story on where it possibly going. Because if it form if the next candle forms where this previous candle has closed, there's like a 90 percent chance it's going to push back up. But if the next candle forms down by the open down below those uh, those low areas, I feel like it's a 90 percent chance that the market's going to go down. So I feel like either way, all in all, the next candle that forms is definitely going to be what tells what to tell what market is going to go, where the market is going to go next. So that's pretty much my analysis. But if I had to stay on one side, um, I would definitely stay on the side of the overall trend, which is down. So I'll be waiting for the prices to either come back up to the 92.250 or the 93.500 level. So the yellow moving average or the purple zone. Because those two areas are probably the best areas that the buyer is going to get into. Because that purple zone is the perfect head and shoulders. 
and where the moving average is is the perfect um, rejection for the next uh, lower high. So that's pretty much my analysis on that one. All right. So that wraps up our analysis for US 30 and dollar Swiss. Now, remember everything that we talked about when it came down to these two pairs. Both of these pairs are in positions right now where they can make a pivotal move either way, either up or down. So that means that tomorrow's session and tonight's uh, predetermined action will be very important leading into tomorrow. So make sure you keep your eyes peeled and you're ready going into tomorrow's session with us because based on these charts, things will be moving. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of other things that we want to go over tomorrow's session as well. So Darren is going to show you guys the other pairs that we'll be covering tomorrow. All right. So you know the pairs that I've been kind of sticking with where we at. Can you see my screen, right? Mm, not yet. Um, I'm good in the you can see me now you see my screen yep. now yeah all right so let's definitely start with a u because i think a u because i definitely believe a u um did kind of exactly what i said it was going to do which was going to break out of that zone which we were patiently waiting for but let's, before we get into that, let's just break down this chart the way we normally would. So let's look at the monthly. We see nothing's really changed ever since these highs. Pretty much been forming lower highs and lower lows. And even retraces and pull back to key levels or key low areas where the market has struggled before. So remember, when the market goes down, the market retraces to previous lows. And when the market goes up, the market retraces or pulls back down the previous highs. So that's pretty much kind of like the method we want to kind of follow. But notice that once we got here and it broke down here, the market only came back up just to retest these two highs, these highs again. It never really broke up past uh, this red zone or even come back up to retest these highs because if you look at it, it just hit the bottom of the red box and it really literally skirted the other way. So whatever was sitting at sitting right here, uh, the market wanted nothing to do with that. So the 20 is below the 50 on this one. Let's drop down to the weekly. Um, kind of like a better story, but just a little bit clearer. The market came back and hit the bottom of the red box, like I said. But ever since then, the highs has only been forming in this red box. And now the candle that we're in right now looks like it just retraced or is respecting the bottom of the red box. So I feel like if the market or this candle continues to respect this level, I think we can definitely get enough momentum for the market to come back down to these highs here or to come back down to this high down here where it lines with these lows, which would kind of pretty much line up somewhere around the 65 moving average. Because like I told you before, this pattern has a tendency when it's far apart or the moving averages are gapped and it's like I formed a higher high, the market always finds some way or enough momentum for the market and the seven moving average to come back down to retest the 65 um, moving average, kind of like a rejoin, like a rejoin or whatever, or like a reset, and then it continues and does whatever it wants to do. So the monthly is telling us that the buyers are in control. Wait, is that what I said? No. So the monthly, the seven is below the 65. And the weekly, the seven is above the 65. So that, like I told you, either tells me one or two things. Either it is still retracing or it's preparing to go the other way or even a fake out. But um, let's drop down to another lower time frame. So the daily and the weekly pretty much tells me that the 20 um, is above the 65, but the monthly is the only one where the 20 is below the 65. And like I told you, if I was to take anybody's story, it would be the highest time frame, which is the 20. So I would be hoping to expect to find more sales in this pair. But being that the weekly and the daily moving averages don't line up, tells me that the market has a little bit more pushing up to do before it decides to continue to push back down in the original direction 
of the highest time frame, which is the uh, monthly. So if I'm kind of just with my thought on retracements, so I know that if I'm originally trying to go down, we retrace going up. So pretty much what we'll be kind of looking for is the market to kind of push back up or trying to retest some high areas in which it was before. So what kind of sticks out to me is these highs that are sitting here. So if the market could come back up into these areas where highs are sitting and reject, I would definitely feel comfortable uh, preparing or putting a sell at this level. But if the market finds some type of momentum to break up past this zone and comes down, down to retest and stays above it, then I would have to say that we could definitely be heading uh, back into this red zone back at the top. And if it does come back near this red zone again, I feel like this time it's definitely going to come back up to the top of the to the top of the red box instead of the bottom, which it did before. So let's see how many pips from uh, from this high level, which we would be looking for a retest to the top of the red box, which is like 200 and something pips. So I'm pretty sure we can definitely get 25, 30 or even 50 pips out of this smooth 300. So. It's all about timing and being patient. So let's drop down to a lower time frame and kind of see what's there for us. So like I said, I would be ultimately waiting for sales. And in order for my sale to happen, I would need a good buy move, which means a nice push back up before I would decide to hop back into the sale to bring the market back down. So for the short term, I would definitely be waiting and seeing what the market does uh, where we are right now because if the market kind of breaks these lows in addition to this low, I feel like we would definitely then have enough momentum to come down here. But if it stays to where we are right now and respects this area, I can then see it go back up. So for just to recap, uh, buyers, pretty much what we would be waiting for is the push back down to lower prices because um, you know we want to buy low sell high find the rejection there and then take the market back up again and hopefully it will bring us somewhere into the red box um, that's buyer sellers we would definitely be wanting to see uh, the break of where we are right now so ultimately we would want to see the breakdown below down below just a little bit more but like I told you with any break of structure or the break of a zone or whatever we definitely want to see the market come back up with the like are you sure you want us to break this area before we continue and then once we get that confirmation which is like a not respect or a begin to not respect it and go back down we would then see it come back down here but like I said with every with every good buy move we need a good sell move so for me as a as a buyer, I would need that sell move to ultimately happen because that would be the best down here would be the best prices to hop in for. The only way that would not be true is if where we are right now, it finds respect here and then it would continue to move up from here. So I would either as a buyer want would either I wouldn't want to go in here because I feel like prices are ultimately too high. But where we are right now, we are at the bottom or or lower levels when it comes to looking at the market because this is the highs and these are the lows down here. So being that we're kind of at the lows, but let's drop down to the five minute and see how high is high and how low is low. So yeah, like the five minute kind of lets you know that we just kind of broke, broke these lows or these structures right here. These lows down here were lined up with this high. So I feel like ultimately being that it came back up to retest that area perfectly, I would definitely be on the side of sellers right now and hopefully see it breaking back down low. So this low has been broken and it's now looking like it's respecting this moving average. But then I would definitely want to see the break of this down here and the retest back right here again and go back down. So I would be more on the side of sellers than anything. Um, and sellers will be happening currently. And buyers, like I said, uh, if if we didn't if we can't get prices back at the lowest or those low areas where we seen which was 
a better price to hop back into. I think that was on a four hour. So yeah, if we can get prices to come back down here, uh, the respect of this level would actually have to do, and then we could just take the market back up again. But I know I said a lot of things, so Tiberius, tell me what you kind of thinking on this pair. Well, I think you broke it down perfectly for the most part, especially in terms of like both the buying and the selling side. So what I, I want to build on that, on what you said. So let's bring it back to the daily chart, because I saw something that kind of piqued my eye, which... I actually noticed on some different pairs when I was trading um, S&P 500 futures not too long ago, it was like a couple weeks ago, what I noticed was that sometimes when we have like head and shoulders patterns like this, where we have a clear head, two clear shoulders, where prices come back and they just kind of test the neckline, but they never break through. I've seen that, uh, I've seen that where prices actually continue to move up, make new highs. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't doubt that AU could actually do that in this situation because if we zoom out a little bit and look at what the trend was before we came into the head and shoulders, the trend was a, a pretty strong uptrend for a good little while. So that tells us that the overall trend is up for the moment, you know, as we can see since mm -hmm. 2020. Like it's been moving. Mm -hmm. So when we come into trends that's as strong as this one, it could be a very good potential to see any type of bearish reversal pattern get undone if that bearish reversal pattern cannot confirm itself. So for the head and shoulders, confirmation comes when a neckline is broken. In this scenario, we didn't see that. So it could be a failure of a major bearish, uh, major bearish pattern on the chart. And whenever you see that, that leads to bigger moves. So we might be able to expect some very nice prices for AU in the future, depending on what goes on. But before we get too excited, let's break it down to the four hour chart because before we get to all of those places, we do have some price levels that we need to run through first. So as Darren was saying, for the selling side, we really don't want to consider that until, like he said, prices break that wick at, I think that's 77 even. Yeah. So because we know the overall trend is up, I like the level that Darren put it right where the last highs were. And I think if push comes to shove and the buyers really step in, we might see support even higher at 77 even. So I think that level will be very important for buyers and sellers. If it stays above it, I'll start to look for the long trades. But if not, I could definitely see the short trade playing out as well. So I'll be patient on AU and see what happens based off the 7,700 level. And I'll be looking to see what I can do tomorrow going into this pair and see if anything nice happens. All right, there you have it. Two analysis and two thoughts from two people who's been trading for some time now. So with that being said, we're going to be patient and see what tonight brings for tomorrow's session. So with that being said, let's move on to the next pair that I would like to go over, which is my final pair of the night. Before we go into my favorite part of the show... Uh, so the last pair that I'll be covering is GJ. So I think ultimately this played out exactly the way I kind of thought it would in terms of that gold zone. So let's go to the monthly. And ultimately, let's see what it was. So, let's zoom in a little bit. So, ultimately, if you can kind of, let me see if you these gray lines. So, pretty much what I was saying was like, being that the market came up to that golden zone and kind of found resistance, or excuse me, support at that area, and then began to push down. Matter of fact, let me not say that. Let me hold that for a lower time. So the only thing we're looking for right now is a trend. So it, ever since this high, uh, this high up here, we've been getting a lower high, lower highs and lower lows. We couldn't come back up to this area, and the twenty is below. Excuse me, the seven is below the sixty-five. When we drop down lower, we pretty much see that the market found some energy down here at these lows, at the perfect buying area, 
and it came back up and broke this high here. Being we got this broke of this high here, we are now looking for the market to do either one or two things. To come back down to retest this area to continue to go back up, or the market is going to come down to this green zone, break down below it, retest it, and then continue to go back down. But I ultimately feel that now that we got a break of these highs, I think now we're kind of looking for a confirmation or a retest at this green zone. And we're going to be pretty much waiting for the market to continue to push back up. So since the 20, excuse me, the 7 is below the 65 on the monthly, the 7 is above the 65 on the weekly, and the 7 is above the 65 on the daily, I would definitely have to treat this pair the way I treated AU which was even though the kind of like a longer time frame, I'm going to be looking for the buy, but ultimately currently we're in a sell momentum and pretty much if I'm going to be a buyer, I want to hop in at lower prices or buy low, sell high kind of idea. So I would, as a buyer, I would ultimately want price to come either to these highs here where it lines up with the 65 or for it to come back down to these highs down here. Either way, it's going to come back down to a high and to continue back up just because we were once below this green zone and then found momentum to come up and break it, retest it, stay above it, come back up, kind of retest it again, and then pretty much been staying above that green zone. So I think right now, I think the market is still in a retracement uh, stage right now. And then if it is going down, ultimately the retracement Excuse me, if the, if the market is going down, the retracement is going up and vice versa. So being I think ultimately that the prices are going to go down, I feel like the market is going, needs to head back up to higher prices. Um, so, you know, sellers like me uh, can hop in and sell at higher prices rather than low. So let's drop down to a smaller time frame and see, really dig in and see what's going on. So I feel like being that we, this blue zone was never retested, the market came back up, broke down below this zone and couldn't break up or retest this area. I feel like um, I would be looking for the sell currently to set up for the buy. So ultimately, I would definitely want to see prices to come back down to this green zone and then continue back up. So ultimately, I'll be looking for the sell, even though I told you I don't take trades when all of my higher time frames don't align, but I feel a little bit more confident with this one just because it's just been making lower lows and lower highs and haven't been making any higher highs and higher lows, which is the number one confirmation of the market going up. So we pretty much have to trade what we see and not what we hope to happen type of thing. We just want to see exactly what our eyes show us. And what my eyes has been pretty much showing me is that it's been going lower lows and lower highs and just been really been respecting the seven moving average. So um, sellers, we definitely can eat out of this. Buyers, I feel like you can eat a little bit, but it wouldn't. it's not going to be much. It's literally going to be crumbs. And I'm not even sure if it would even be worth getting. Um, just because the way this candle just, this green candle just formed, I feel like this was an, a perfect little retracement because it came back up and touched these highs perfectly. So now that we got that retest, now I feel like ultimately the retest is back down here at the bottom of this yellow one. And then I will feel comfortable bringing it back down to uh, at least at least back down to the uh, purple zone. But the green zone would be better. The green zone would be better, but I feel like that would be a lot. But, you know, anything, the market is the market and anything can happen. Let's see how much pips it is from where we are right now just to the green zone so that's a smooth 150 pips so i feel like you can definitely we can definitely secure 50 pips out of this here and yeah so i i just feel like i feel more comfortable real comfortable with the selling right now currently um just to set up for my overall move which would be long so ty tell me what you're thinking over there good buddy all right, so let's pull this back out to the daily chart. All right, so what I'm seeing so far, I'm seeing prices. We have made a high up there at the golden zone, but ever since that time, we've been 
having a very strong sell-off and pushing back down towards lower prices. We're actually towards the highs. We were closer to 153. Now we're sitting in the 149. So we've fallen more than 400 pips since we've reached our top, and that's very significant, even with a volatile pair like GJ. Now, as we can see, we're continuing to make lower lows and lower highs, and right now we're running into a little bit of support right now for the moment at uh, the zone that we're currently at, at 149.50, 149.75ers. But based on what we're looking at so far, even though the overall trend is up, like Darren said, we are in a retracement, and I agree with him when he said that we can still see prices run a little bit further before the buyers step back in. So ultimately, if they do come down to the green zone, I think that would be the, the best spot, as he said. So I would say right now, I will also lean towards a short trade because we're seeing lower lows and lower highs. Now, even though the overall trend is up, when you have pullbacks and you have retracements, you never want to get caught on the wrong side. So it's OK to go ahead and switch teams and maybe start selling during the retracement or during the pullback and then hop back on for the regular trend when it gets back started. So I agree with Darren. I would say right now we're looking for the short trade until we get better prices where we can buy low and sell high. There you have it. There you have it. So literally that saying, buy low and sell high, buy low and sell high is not some cliche saying that was just made up over 100 years ago, but it's a real saying that applies to current things. So with that being said, I'm going to be on the side of buyers on, I mean, excuse me, on the side of sellers on this one. At least we can get prices low enough for us, like us long-term buyers want to hop back in. So I think the areas we want to be weary of is 148.75. So let's write this down. GJ. We were, we're looking for prices to come back down. So pretty much... If we want to get a sell, we want price to come either to this purple zone at 150.000 or back up at 150.25 to come back down to... to I'm going to say the bottom of the zone. So pretty much 148.700. That's where I would be taking it to for take profit. But pretty much 150 flat and 150.25 are the two areas that I'm looking for the market to come back up to retest. Or maybe even right here at this uh, 65 move, uh, excuse me, the 7 moving average at 150.500. So this would even be even better for it, kind of like what it did right here. So it literally came back up and nearly touched the moving average and then shot back down again. So I feel like we can kind of get the same thing. So those are the three areas I'll be looking for is 150, 500, 150, excuse me, 150, 500, 150 flat, and 150, 250. And with that said, I'm all in for the sell currently to set up for the buy. All in? All in. All right, so let's move to my favorite part of the show, my favorite part of the show, which is Traders Talk. So Traders Talk gives us, me and Tiberius, a chance and an opportunity to pretty much give you the real deal and the real story about this trading, maybe drop some keys and let you really understand what this Forex and trading is all about. We don't want to flash money. We don't want to flash cars. We don't want to flash our account showing how much we made on a trade because it's not about that. It's about uh, building a skill and, and, and mastering that skill to pretty much create wealth for you and your family to eat off of for the rest of your life. So with that being said, I think pretty much the only thing I kind of want to live with, uh, leave with you guys are kind of just go over the areas in which we talked about tonight. So I think I pretty much missed, I didn't write down AU, but the three for my two pairs, excuse me, for Tiberius's two pairs, the areas we want to look out for is 33,500 and 33,900 through 33,925. I even wrote down the area 33, uh, 34,000, uh, excuse me, 34,000 even. So those would be the areas we'll be looking for for US 30. The areas that we'll be looking for and waiting for for dollar Swiss 
would be 92,250, 93,500, and 93,250. And for GJ, the areas we'll be kind of looking for is to take it to TP of 148,700 uh, from either the three areas of 150 flat. 150, 250, or 150, 500. I did not write down the levels for one for AU, but it's nothing to go back over here and kind of find some levels. Um. So why is this AU charted up? That's crazy because I definitely did not put this. But um. So yeah, so AU I'll be looking for the sell setting up for the sh so pretty much the sell setting up for the buy down here. So kind of where we are right now. So I'll pretty be look, pretty pretty much be looking for the seventy seven five twenty five, excuse me, seventy seven three seventy five. Uh, that break of these low, the the seventy seven zero seven. Um, to bring it back down to the even bottom, a TP will be down here seventy six flat. So. Those are the areas we kind of just want to, you know, wait for and see what the market does overnight. So when we pull up on our session tomorrow, which I will be attending, I will be there sharp, 9, 10. Because I know I definitely missed maybe the last two live Fridays. But tomorrow, I'm live. I'm here. I don't have to work tomorrow. So those are the areas I definitely want to leave with you guys. But I know Tiberius has a couple keys. He wants to drop and leave with you guys. So go ahead, my boy. Yeah, so I wanted to tell you guys about the importance of due diligence. And that basically means that you need to do the work behind all the trades that you take because, yes, you can get good signals and, you know, you can buy things because the hype is what it is during that time. But you also have to understand what you're putting your money behind. And that's because when things get shaky, which they always do when you're holding things for a long time period, especially when you're swing trading, You'll have to sit through pullbacks. Now, if you haven't done your research on a pair that's good and you buy into it, yeah, it may go up. But on the pullback, you're going to get scared and sell your position because you don't have the confidence in it because you didn't do the homework behind it. And that's kind of what happened to me. I was in Dogecoin, you know, a, a few weeks ago, probably about three weeks ago. I bought Dogecoin and Bitcoin at the same time because when I looked at the Dogecoin chart, it was in a consolidating pattern coming out of an overall flag. So I knew that kind of like Bitcoin where eventually it's going to be a pop. I knew it was going to be a very similar situation with Dogecoin. So I put money into it a few weeks back and I just held it. And I started talking to people about it and telling more people about it. And somebody was telling me, you know, Dogecoin isn't a real crypto. You need to get rid of that. That's not something you want to hold long term. So at first I didn't think anything of it. But then I started thinking about it more and it got to me and I was like, man, you know what? He's right. So I took my Dogecoin and put it into Bitcoin. Now, the problem is, if you guys have seen Dogecoin's chart today, it shot up almost 400 percent. So all I had to do was trust in my analysis and hold on to it. And I think that's why actually doing your research, not only from a fundamental perspective, but from a technical perspective, is so important when it comes to your trades, because once you have your mind made up, it shouldn't matter what anyone else has to say about your trade. Your trade is your trade based on the knowledge and research and work that you put in. So you have to stick with your trade through good and bad, no matter what people tell you. Now, of course, you always want to listen to what people have to say. And if it's constructive and it makes sense, OK, go for it. But just because somebody has a different opinion than you on a position doesn't mean that you should just run for the exits and try and get out of there. As a matter of fact, it should make you think back and reflect on your position even more and say, is it as strong as I think? And then you have to go back, reevaluate your research and be like, OK, yes, it is. I'm a, I want to hold on to it. But in order to reevaluate your research, you first have to do it. So that's what I want to leave with you guys tonight. Always do your due diligence on your pairs, because most of the time, if you're right about the direction and you do your homework, you'll have enough confidence to hold the position and make the money that you're supposed to make from that trade. So there you have it, guys. There you have it. Some good keys, some good knowledge to take with you guys for tonight. But I just want to appreciate everyone who pulled up tonight and showed us love and even pulls up every night to show love. 
And I hope you have your, your areas written down, your, your prices, because tomorrow we're gonna get we're gonna get up early, bright and early, 9, 10 Eastern Standard Time. We're gonna be locked and loaded, ready to go tomorrow for our live trade. So with that being said, let's wrap up this good old stream. And I want to say everybody appreciate everyone who shows love, who sends emails, who sends messages, that interact with us in the chat. We love y'all. But please tell a friend to tell another friend to hit the follow button to even to tell Granny to download the Twitch on her phone so she could tune in Tuesdays and Thursdays and grab some of these keys. So you know how to contact us or contact me, which is on my IG, which my personal page is at I'm the D guy, I M D G U Y, or my personal business, excuse me, my business account, which is at Pearl underscore financial underscore LLC. I'm still building some things with that page, but I'm definitely going to get it up and running for sure this year. So be on the lookout for that. But you already know how to contact my boy, Ty. Go ahead and give him your links. You guys can contact me and get in touch on both Instagram and YouTube under the name Ty Trades Futures. Make sure you subscribe to me over on YouTube and then you follow me over on Instagram. Go ahead, interact with me. Send me a DMs if you want to talk about futures, Forex, stocks, whatever it is. Make sure you get at me. And, of course, don't forget to follow our YouTube page for the Bison Trading Show. Same name on YouTube. We have videos up there, too, and we'll YouTube, be coming out you, with you, some YouTube very... is tuned in right now, so don't talk yeah. like YouTube not tuned in. So, YouTube, you, YouTube, YouTube. Yep. I'm talking to you guys. I know the YouTube family, we're building that up. So, we're definitely going to be putting more content on that page. So, please shoot us, go and shoot and watch some of our videos you know, just to get your keys up. And then, you know, that's all we have for tonight. So, you know my next line for anybody who's been in our stream. Ty, please take us out of here respectfully. All right, good people. We'll see you tomorrow morning, 9, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, that's it.